Shall I take off my clothes so you see where you are born? And you know that is a curse. Nobody. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm done. I'm done. They go. And that was one of the most important, um, the most important tool uh, that women have had. And I know they have even used that in Nigeria. Going to, to just, you know, uh, strip naked. And then the men would know, uh-uh. No, this is the end of us because some new would, would be so about beating beating among the kikuyus no traditionally it was not that much it was not for killing the way it is today i don't know where they, they adopted that from the, the west because they are reading and they are seeing what's going on in the movies but it was not the way of life among the kikuyus welcome welcome to another episode of the wsxm podcast where a united africa is an undisputed africa so here in this video uh, with, you see, we are going to speak, talk about retired psychologist, Dr. Wanjui Kamu. I hope I pronounced her name correctly. And she's, she was born in Kenya in 1941, and she experienced the, the colonizers firsthand when they came to Kenya in the nine, late 1940s, and Nairobi and, and um, also Rwanda. And she was, she's talking about and explaining what took place, how they changed the their names back then to Christianity and change them over to Christianity and introduce all sort of non African traditions then and it ca it caused havoc in the population at the time because the these things was forced upon them as a Christian um ways and lives and ways to live. And so they some of them adopted it and while others rebel against it. So listen to this cause what she said is so true. A person without a, who does not know their past are mentally they are mentally enslaved. So listen to this brilliant, brilliant speech by this former retired psychologist, African Kenyan woman who is a Pan Africanist as well, and she give a broad scope on how things was to how things is now, and we can see which culture is much better to live by. Western colonizers are the African culture and. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section as well, as you will very much enjoy this lecture. So, let me know what you think about it. Bo well, thank you. Thank you very much for making me a part of this story. I look around and I see young people and I feel very excited because anybody without a history is a slave, mental slave, because anybody can call you a name and you answer to that name. But when you know who you are, where you have been, where your people have been, you owe that loyalty to yourself and to them. I was born in January 20th, 1941. And of course, uh, four uh, your relations get me my tamana four times. And uh, for the boy is five. And uh, I hope you know why the boys had five and the girls had four, because some women argue, particularly the feminist kikuyus, that why give the boy more than the other? We actually had the fifth one was like recognizing the um, the fact that that young man will go to the forest to fight, will go to the field to fight to protect. At that at that long time ago, we were fighting with the the Maasai's, and uh, they were actually fighting for wealth. Since this land of yours, and I'm looking at Loretto now, where we are sitting. This land was taken over by the British colonialist, you know, by Dalamea, Lord Dalamea, actually, who grew coffee here because they were giving the natives blankets in exchange. And again, I, I try as an academician myself, I try to understand our Kikuru men, why were so... Um, why were so giving? Why were, did they allow themselves to be compromised? Because they they really believed in their land. But for some reason, we go again to the to our culture. Um, when people come to visit you, just like the Hebrews, you you enter you um, you welcome them, and 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 generosity. You give them food before you ask them how they are and you know it's also something that i also look at the greetings nikwega you know is it all well where you come from nikwega how are we do you have rain what do you have that is more like uh, than we have and finally we mwega you know how are you so this whole thing shows you the whole um concept of en encompassing 
the life, the holistic way of life that was uh, um, uh, the Kikuyu way. So then there comes, and of course, remember the, the biblical story of how Jesus says, you, when somebody comes, you give them their feet and they wash their, their, their dust and then give food. So I try to understand that they, my, my paternal and maternal grandfathers and plus their age mates, they were they gave in so easily because of that cultural thing. Yeah, there was also the concept yes. of Mugani uh, Niroi. This is it, uh, You know that a, a, a guest is passing through, so welcome them. So what do they do? The, a white man comes, and of course there had been prediction that he will come, and you don't know, you always think a guest is bringing something good to you, and because they are passing, you welcome them. So. The Western culture is not like that at all. So here is my grand, my grandfather said, and they are whatever, you know, agreeing what we bring you blankets. And so they say, oh, that is good. You know, we didn't have, and therefore whatever they are going to talk, you've already compromised because you think their culture and their cultural practices are like yours, that they are not going to grab and take over what you have. Where you come from, they also believe in, uh, uh, in body in a clan like you know so just like they came and used their culture superiority of us then we are also judging them from our own cultural understanding you know that these people are going to be here for a short time maybe after one chimera you know after maybe we had two chimeras you know kianja hina na kiake na i remember as we go on na kianja he go see kianja he that was from march April, uh, sorry, from September, Namwere. Namwere was the one that was not as productive. The whole idea that this person who has come, who is the guest, is going to pass through, is dominated, and therefore is it just land that you want? Right there. But again, I would like to emphasize judging those people according to our own cultural orientation. We are kind people, and I like what you said, because again, in my research, I realized whenever there was a crossroad, the Kikuyus built Agakombe, a small house, where after harvesting, they took maize, they took beans, they kept it there. That Kanyomba at the crossroads, Masamanidio, is where poor people went to get the food at night when nobody saw them. That shows really who we are, you know, how kind. And that whole thing has been mis misunderstood, misinterpreted, because it's like we don't understand money. We don't understand, you know, that uh, uh, you have to always monetize things. But I do know growing up that Tokombe to Utuariho, now, in my own home, we had one man who didn't have a wife, had passed many, many, and that guy was like our family. In the morning, whatever we were having, porridge, he was a part of it. And whoever came, again, you know, uh, the, the, it's a very interesting thing. And, and every time I think you have heard me talk like that, Professor, that I am because we are. And because we are, I am. It was so real and lived. I've seen it lived, you know, that there was nothing like I can't give you and you can also give me. Of course, you know, uh, I mean, by that I mean whatever is, is possible. You, you, you can't give all your, your, what you have, but the, the thing is to be, to empathize with, with your next door neighbor. Whenever the white people went, they first built a school, they built a church, church number one, church and a school. And uh, uh, then, of course, the administration. So, Ngenda had a mission school, and uh, the, the, the head there, Protestant, you know, it was a Scottish, you know, um, Scottish, Scotland mission um, church, Presbyterian. It was headed by uh, a woman we called Vivi. Bibi is like uh, Memsap or whoever, you know, they, it starts from there. Bibi is like, it's not an ordinary woman, <laughs> it's a Bibi, you know, that you have got to address her. So uh, they lived there, they ate different foods, the men cooked for them, which was again very unusual. So when we saw them, that name itself, uh, when I saw them, it's like, it's not one of us. 
So for me, I knew this is a person who is higher than I am. This is a, a person who is different. And I remember saying that I was really quite interested in going to the toilet. I don't know why, because my African-American friends told me, don't ever talk like that again. But it, it, I saw these people as a mystery, you know. Me, white people, uh, it was like they were not real. And I really wanted to know, what do they eat? Do they even go to the toilet? What kind of a toilet? Our toilets were outside, and they had a toilet inside. So I was able to go, because I was going to school, and my mother was uh, a, a big person in the church. So we, we could go into the, to the baby's um, house and be given midwiti, you know, biscuits, one or two. And so we longed for that. It's a new thing, and you know it tastes good. So I look forward. So, so the white person was a mystery, as far as I'm concerned. I never took her as a human being. I never, not one of us. And therefore, I didn't think, I didn't call them a monkey like they call us in a lot of uh, literature. But I saw them like, you know, they're not one of us, and therefore I didn't accept. So there was that hierarchy, which I'm going to address later on, because as I grew, I went to pick uh, coffee from their large um, acreage, which they had taken by force again. So uh, when we went there, he has the money, and we didn't have money. So what, what do I want? Things are sold. When I was growing up, when I was very young, we really didn't have that concept of money. But then the whole beauty concept, as you can see, I just love, and women just love earrings and whatever. And, and of course, the kikuyus also. Like now, they have different ones that are not made by the kikuyus, but new ones. So there was that enticement, let me go work for the white people because they have money. So my concept of a white person is a mystery. <laughs> Maybe up to today. I remember, you know, later on when I was actually in training school in Kam Kambui, um, that whenever a white person came, we cleaned everything and hid all our nyongo pots, African nyongos and everything, and therefore produced caps, which they had introduced. Siakauru, you know, I mean, the <laughs> so that we would show we are, we, we, we are part of you. My people who are the Kikuyus, they've always believed in a God. They've always feared, reverent, they fear, not fear, but reverence. Um, that the minute they had, we are praying, they took off their hearts and they prayed. So, so the, one of the things that uh, the, the, um, the colonialists used and exploited so well was that belief in a God. So how do you want us to pray? So they are saying, yeah, we know God. So now that we, you, we are together with you, we cannot face Mount Kenya. How do you want us to pray? Okay, But before that, we have to change your name. <laughs> so, you know, so because, because our, your name is not really acceptable, you know? So you have your name changed. So, I hope I'm answering you in a very big understanding because then your name is changed and whatever you are is put aside. And it's like a new rebirth. You are a new person now who is into this. So we lived two cultures. In that church, we prayed like this. And a lot of people, therefore, how they looked at this, Nimodongo. There's a, there's a white person, Muzungu, I don't even know what Muzungu means actually in Kiswahili. Muzungu, what does it mean? Anyway, Nimodongo in Kikuyu is, is uh, Muzungu, and then we, we are like saying to be considered civilized, to be considered better than who you are, you have to have this name. So the villagers longed to have those names. At the, yeah, you are named Joseph Vaini. Is it Joseph Vaivo? Is it a horse pipe or what is it? It sounds nice. And the Kikuyus, I must say, we love novelties. So people are rushing to be given those new names. So the whole concept of the, the, what they talked of white people is uh, strangers. Strangers who are different from who we are. But I, they started understanding them when they 
then made Nairobi their place and that only a few people, I was hoping I would have my, my, my passbook, but it's with somebody in Mombasa and I told them to, because we know later on we have to have a passbook. But to answer, I'm still answering you because not everybody understood the injustices of the white people, particularly those where we were in Nyenda, because there was no, no uh, white people and the ones who came, they took us to school, they taught us how to read, so we were very grateful. Mm? And whatever it is they were teaching us, we thought that was very good. And But when we then started encroaching Nairobi, and those who lived in Nairobi, those are the ones then who really saw what was going on. And I don't think people understood the white person until they went uh, to, to uh, they joined the Second World War II, where they really saw black people were shooting better than even the white people, and they saw their weakness. That was the beginning of really rubbing shoulders with those people. They had songs like, uh, I'll, I'll remember, I wish, <laughs> Tufunga Safari, Tufunga Safari, Amriyana Ni, Amriyana Ni Kabuteni, Amriya You know, KR was uh, Kenya, whatever. African rifles. African rifles, yeah. So, th this, I mean, what do we think of this? I mean, it's a good song, and it, they are marching, and they, they have got. Um, uh, uniforms, and, and I think there was that big uh, admiration from uh, a young girl, you know, looking, because normally men do not have that good clothes. These have got shoes, these have got uh, um, uniform, they, they, they are doing things that no one else ever did, because otherwise we were, being, you know, dancing differently. So there was a lot of admiration of, uh, uh, of what they were bringing, you know, the fact that they could do things that uh, uh, we couldn't do. Uh, my neighbor's name was uh, Wamboiwa Mushina. Wamboiwa Mushina never converted into Christianity like my mother. This woman, Wamboiwa Mushina, they were very clever. They knew you don't start with the Christians. Odin. Odin started with, <laughs> with non Christian in Gatondo, where I'm talking about. So they called them because those people were close to their culture. The Josephines, and the Chauses <laughs> of the day were kind of segregated by the Kimathi and all these people movement. So they started with the people who knew the meaning of uh, being a Kikuyu. So they would have oaths. So this woman was a very good of uh, my mom. She also, her husband had died and they had one thing in common. They were widow. They were widowed, and they would see how men, because again, some cultural things have started evading where they would not respect widowed women. And they would be like, if you, if a woman has no husband, you don't want them to associate with your wife. So they had a very close knot, knit, and and um, Wambui broke her oath. Came and told my mother. That's how close. And say, if you do this, I might die. But if I die, I don't want you to die because this is what's happening. But at that time, they they would be given um, the oath, a statement, you know, that you'll never betray. And then they, I, w I was being told, I never saw this. You would go around like seven times, and they they would also, of course, uh, have some blood and uh, mixed with. Um, uh, cow, cow dung, you know, uh, I mean, do you know the intestines, how you, 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 comedia, mm -hmm. you know, how you take out that, that is what they would, you know, something to really know, this is blood, blood is sacred, so the idea of what we are doing, we are doing this in sacredness, because blood is life, and life connects to God, so we, all this is, we are doing this, and God is with us, and if you betray this, may you die. So there was no respect for life for somebody who cannot feel bound to that oath. And, and so they had, I think, one, two, or three. That made them mum. You come and ask, that you, people today, if they are shown one million, they will, they, will, they will even half a million, they will give up. But these people kill me. I don't know what you're talking about. So they were to sacrifice whatever they had to be able to uh, to get the land back from the white people. And uh, 
yeah, they, they went from home to home and then they were also being told, and this is where again one boy came in very handy. We were three girls. Remember I told you my brother died. So my older sister, Murugi, who is now uh, passed, bless her heart, um, was earmarked to be taken to the forest and uh, uh, to cook for them. And uh, when they were just to come, I would, we, we would always go to the, to the, um, to the nearest, uh, there was three little forest everywhere to get uh, um, something to sweep with. So I'd gone there to, 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 to take one and I found this man whom I knew, Kamarua Moiro. Kamarua Moiro had, uh, you know, they used to have, uh, their hairs were long and then they had like uh, that thing they put on Jesus Christ, you know, like the, of the thorns. They would wear something to camouflage them. They, they actually look like you couldn't tell them from the tree. So there's Kamau and I'm like, Kamau Emwega, you know, I'm just shouting. <laughs> and then he, he turned out to be like, no, you, you know. So I ran home. I went and told my mother, please just make, I was frightened seeing a person I know who refuses to recognize me. And uh, uh, it, well, my mother said, don't you say anything. So that very day, Kwambui came, told my mother, they are coming to get Murugi. That's my sister, my late, my first late sister. So you better move. You go wherever you can because they will definitely take her. So we were frightened because they were capable of killing you if you didn't go their way now these people in the movement and that's the way it should be i mean you know we are fighting for the same cause but because you are no christian you are christian and you don't understand you can be resistant but here we, you know so at, at this point i don't care i like them to kill because you know but at that point i was saving myself so uh, uh i told my mother make chapatis for me because i know we are going to die <laughs> and that's what i want chapatis in my stomach you know so um we did not sleep at our house. I don't know whether you have heard of Muruaitina. Yeah, Muruaitina. I don't know whether that the name could have been Bottom. Mm. So the Kikuyu just like uh, they, they, they say, then they will say the Bottom is Itina. So um, he would, uh, uh, they did not, he was notoriously known to kill on sight. I remember sleeping on the trees. You would climb up the tree, let the car pass because the car is in the dark, uh, you know, in, in, the, in the dark uh, time of the night. And one car coming, there were no lights. One car would really show you, you know, the high beam would be on. So the minute we saw that, we knew our time had come. At least I knew my, 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 my time to die had come. So then we did that several times going to sleep there. But in the meantime, it's not just walking, it's climbing up a tree and, and hiding because this uh, Mr. Bottom, uh, as I would want to call it, was a policeman because he used guns and he came with a, um, with a police you know, vehicle, Land Rovers, that's what they drove. Would you say you are, the, the children mm -hmm. were traumatized? Yes, we were traumatized. Indeed, mm -hmm. that's the word. Mm -hmm. We were traumatized by the fear because we didn't know that we would be there next time. Because I, I remember always telling my mom, give me chapatis. Because chapatis was the food for Christmas, not these days, you know, but we only had that for Christmas. So as a young person, I just wanted, look, I see you, Todoro, so we may not be there. That, that, that's a trauma. It's a trauma, without a doubt. And, and no wonder you're finding that the results of that trauma in our lives a lot later. Trauma is something that uh, affects your mind. You feel it, it affects its emotional disease. An emotional disease that takes away the trust that you had for your father, for your uncle, for the community to protect you, for the government. There is no one to protect you. And there is no one to explain to you because this um, underground movement was not telling people the education. That the only people who received education were those who went for oathing. Those who were not a part of it, they didn't understand. 
and whenever you have uh, uh, whenever whenever you have a situation where you want the public to be a part of it just like now they have been saying democracy you have got to, to involve the people to tell them what's happening so you have this huge group that does not understand two the the kikuyu way of doing things young people like you if you are not circumcised you cannot be told things particularly things that are uh, confidential because you have not been socialized to keep secrets but you're overhearing as a child you're overhearing things so there is trauma is there trauma also for the older people of course because they are unable to protect their wives and later on as you know there, there was no rape no kikuyu man raped a black a, a, a woman all the rape came from other people from the white people because there was that whole thing of circumcision i tell you if i had a way of just saying nobody should be circumcised in the hospital circumcision for both men and women and i know that will shock you i don't want to go further but i do support them because it's not really about the cut forget about the cut it's the psychological part that followed that made you swear that you will never hurt a woman that you will never hurt another person that is a part of you anyway the trauma of a man not being able to protect his wife his children his grandmother his whoever was great resilience is what um, came automatically particularly from our culture because our culture one of the the characters that we emphasize is courage courage whether you are seeing whether you are taking your dead mother like me your dead father you cannot allow yourself to collapse and there are a lot of proverbs that sustained people I would say that is what sustained people that we know to we are dying because of our soil yeah let me die let me die and I'll never tell these strangers anything about the oath I will die for what I believe in. Again, integrity. I would say integrity and the courage what our people had. And really, I cry very often when I'm talking about that because integrity is what our people knew. And I think that is what provided the resilience that enables us to cancel ourselves from internal because we cannot let go we have to survive crying as you know has never been encouraged among the kikuyu but but that came as a confusion later on so having not received uh, that counseling and then having the cultural breakdown with the christianity or toward i would say then we started copying drinking there was the kikuyu drinking was only ceremonial when a baby has been born when uh, uh, there is a wedding celebration you all know that word you know where you are paying dowry or whatever that exchange and when there is there was not this drinking and i would say the consequence of uh, that trauma andu makiambiriria kunywa johi Every time there is any celebration, there is cause, you relax with a beer. Excessively, you know, that they became drunkards. And it was not only men, even women realized. 1956 really is where this whole thing is. So now, apart from you have all been killed, some people have been killed. Remember, Muto. Uh, 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 what was it called? Warari, Muito, Muito Warari. You know, so many died. And by the way, they are my husband's relatives. Actually, those where it happened. So you are hearing, you are hearing of all these deaths. You are seeing people at Tumia Magikiro bottles. But I remember that was used to be a huge bottle of Coca-Cola, which was not plastic, but actually glass being put in 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 uh, uh, in, in private parts of a woman. My own. Uh, narrative in Deya, 
that was done to her. And uh, uh, these journeys, they were called journeys, they're the British young people who were all released here. Makerewa woko adwa inge muno. Moke ma put order in this colony because it's not controllable anymore. I think you, you probably have heard of that. So those women who were raped, and they are, not, they are raped by the Johnnies who are drinking, because they saw them drinking. They would drink and also uh, rape them and then put bottles in, in their vagina. Can you imagine? You probably have sisters, mothers. What kind of a thing that is? And it's not one person. It's not two people. It's, it's a lot of people. And the ones who refused to tell of uh, the Mau Mau, their breasts were pressed. And the others, most of uh, the people, uh, they were castrated. You know that. Just because those people refused to part with the information. Yeah, that we, we wanted so that uh, they can be incriminated. So, all those people, they never received counseling. They never received even the honor from the nation. And I'm not saying this to dishonor the government, because the Christian, the, the non-Christians, the, the, the government, the educated, we are all in one camp camp we are all trying to know who we are we've lost our identity at that point that's why i'm saying you can't even ha recognize that these people are the ones and i think this is how i interpret this as a psychologist that this is how they were not even given land those who died for us this is how they were not even recognized because there were very many there was not no not no ways of learning who those people and I'm so glad you are doing this and I really hope you young people are going to look deeper into it and say wow this is how can we how can we um, uh, modify some of the things that we do that would probably help us to help those people who came up with the idea of the Mau Mau because the whole thing was so selfless and yet we are now seeing people killing their mothers, people sleeping with incest, you know, everywhere. We are seeing all this. So what is all this? And, and that's a very good question you asked. Because it's not only that generation followed. That generation became selfish, became like now, you know, this is who I am. I, I, this is mine. And uh, uh, the British did not have respect for women. I hope you know that, and that the women who were respected, nobody could beat his wife in front of the parent. That's the mother of, that's the mother's, that's the husband's mother, and that's the husband's of father's. Because of the, you can't beat my mother. And that was the end of it. And so, there were a lot of things that sustained that first generation. But because they were not talking, now they are civilized and they are also not being taught how to come up, you know, the the age group that kept people together, that respected that you couldn't do anything, started disintegrating. So in my view then, the government even forgot how to honor. And if there was any place where women were discriminated, is the Western culture. And remember, for the longest time, they could not even vote. I will talk about the Kikuyus. The Kikuyus recognized women. There was a council of women, and I don't even understand why men, and men are just refusing women, because the women had their own council. If there was a case, they said, go ask the women, the Nyakenyuas like me. The Nyakenyuas who have finished their having their children, who have, uh, you know, who had their hairs all, all, you know, combed, you know, out, they had a say in the society. Remember, I told you, polygamy had an order. Polygamy did not keep their women. The whole idea of polygamy was not just uh, sleeping. It's not, it was just not based on sex. Women were more respected as human beings who are, who are capable of their own, who are professionals, who have authority in some areas more than men, okay? So, the feminist movement uh, came as a result of, uh, they couldn't vote where they were. That's why I'm, I'm talking of the Council of Women and Council of Men, which is equality, it's a, it's a recognition of equality. Over there, women could not vote. Over there, women could not be employed. Women 
in traditional Kikuyu life, they had their own hut, they had their, their own piece of land where they farmed, they produced their, their produce, take, took, took it to the market or give it away. The rest they, they saved in a granary, Ikombe. Hmm? The man, his house is not among the four. His house is right there, Vingira. That is where his house is, okay? So the woman has a lot of autonomy in her own hut, in her own garden, and whatever she did with her produce was not her husband's what? Business, okay? So that was the Kikuyus. Now, occasionally, just like you have women, like you have naughty people, there are some women who will do things that, that are not becoming. And usually, Bariangania, because we have that, uh, 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 that uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I mean, there is matrimonial, uh, patriarchal, patriarchal society. Name Bariangania usually is man. Ugo Mondoria, Ugo Sadoka, Nemuzuriusio, Nego Kane Okunyaruhi. But there was no total war. That's what I used to call it. Ulinga mutumia itina, ulinga haha. Yeah, there was nothing like that because you are age mate. And I'm worried now. They will make sure you behave the way you should be. Tamuzuri, mudora zura, what to do. Choose muzuri is somebody who chooses what to do. So there was no war. What about in the West? There was war. Ego kohora, ako force, ugo komenake, ako force. You know, I mean, all that time. So the Western culture is the one we have now adopted that had nothing to do with the Kikuyu culture. And I said that. And I said, go talk to anybody those older people who are my queen. This is a new thing of beating the women. And if he was going to come and beat because he's probably drunk, I mean, so that he can come and, and beat the wife, the, the, the community, the, your grandmother, sorry, not your grandmother, but uh, your mother-in-law, your in-laws are living in the same compound. So if even she cried and ran away from, from the Dingira or whatever, the, because the man had gone to the, to the, very rarely did they go to the heart, I mean to the heart of a woman. But should there be a war, they could go, oh, you start like wooing, you know, like sort of, uh, not wooing, is uh, Kugambu screaming, then the mother-in-law would come, Neke, what is happening here? Now this is my own place. So the, the man would say, well, this one, hey, you go away, that's my mother. Or that's because again the father would also claim the the, the wife to be uh, his mother. So there was that kind of connection that you would not dare. And if you dare, because sometimes a man want to show you a man enough, the woman will say, "Do you want me to show you where you come? Go to Ramire. Shall I take off my clothes so you see where you are born?" And you know that is a curse. Nobody. Oh no 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 no. I'm done. I'm done. They go. And that was one of the most important, um, the most important tool uh, that women have had, and I know they have even used that in Nigeria, going to, to just, you know, uh, strip naked. And then the men would know, uh-uh, no, this is the end of us, because some new would, would be. So about beating, beating among the Kikuyus, no. Traditionally, it was not that much. It was not for killing the way it is today. I don't know where they, they adopted that from the, the West because they are reading and they are seeing what's going on in the movies, but it was not the way of life among the Kikuyus.